not standing up for it and not keeping a firm foundation and beginning to compromise and allowing these things to come in. But God ain't going to hold me responsible for uh, people not knowing the truth. I am going to continue in the straight and narrow path. And I'm not going to waver by God's grace and mercy. Continue to give you the uncompromising word. I know it's not popular, but Amen. I will not deviate Amen. to the left or to the right. And uh, I heard somebody testifying. I don't know who it was. I don't think, think it was the night. How that they're going to um, praying for, I believe it's Sister John and me, praying for somebody. And then um, this person that was praying for, um, apostolic, apostolic, one of them, they're both similar. And Sister John and May told him she's holding this. And this apostolic person, uh, apostolic, telling Sister John and May that, you know, she's apostolic. In other words, apostolic means established on the apostles' doctrine. Preaching, believing, and practicing, and living what Paul preached. And what the apostles preached. I, but they, they left out a point, and that modesty. And years ago, women couldn't wear shorts and speak in tongues and show their legs and show, and show the print of the private parts and the crack of the butts and then get them speaking tongues. Well, I'm telling it like it is. How are the mighty fallen from the standards of God, from holiness? That's right. And I'm glad God established us and put us on a firm foundation. On John. Amen. I've preached already. Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But we're going to find out that God is holy. Amen. And what he's going to do in this last day, he's going to do it through a people that have come out, a sold out people yeah. that's come out from among the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to do it through this loose living bunch. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, it's not. But I want to tell you, I, I hope this word will give you some encouragement to um, the book of Psalms, chapter 32 and verse 7. Book of Psalms, chapter 32 and verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Man, that's, I, I like that. Man. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me. The word preserve means keep me from trouble. Thou shalt come past me about with songs of deliverance. Thou shalt come past, you know, oh, they must have got that from Moses because, you know, Miriam, when they was delivered after 400 years of bondage and delivered and God divided the Red Sea, brought them through that terrible wilderness for 40 years, kept them. That's the song Miriam, Miriam broke out with that song. So, evidently, David must have got some inspiration from Miriam, go ahead. Is that I will that? instruct thee. Huh? I will instruct thee. I will instruct you and teach thee and teach you in the way in the way which thou shalt go. Which thou shalt go. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with my eyes. With my eyes. Man. I remember that um, years ago when we had these when we had these microphones with these cords. 
And uh, Brother Joe would uh, look at me. He didn't have to say one word. He just looked at me, and I knew by following his eyes what to do. Yeah. And that's what God is saying. I will instruct you with my eyes. That's why we got to keep our eyes on him. Amen. Let's, okay, let's read another scripture here. Over in Psalms. It's all right if I just read scriptures tonight. Yes, Psalms chapter 119 and verse 114. Now, this, the message, title of this message is The Hiding Place. Just want to give you a few scriptures on this. The hiding place. Thou art my hiding place. Thou art my, this is Psalms 119 and verse 114. Thou art my hiding place. And my shield. And you are my shield. I hope in thy word. Thank God that shield reflects all the fiery darts that the devil shoots in our bodies, in our thoughts, in our lives. Constantly shooting. But thank God for the shield. Yes, the shield of faith. Is that all that? Read the scripture again. Thou art my hiding place. You are my hiding place. And my shield. My shield. I hope. I hope. In thy word. In your word. Amen. That's what I hope is, isn't it? Amen. Psalms chapter 17 and verse 8. Psalms chapter 17 and verse 8. As the apple of the, of the eye. Keep me. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me. Hide me. Under the shadow of thy wings. Under the shadow. Hide me. Yes. Under the shadows of your wing. Keep me like the apple of the eye. Like that seed that's hidden in the center of that apple. God hide me in the center of your bosom. That's, you know, one of the uh, things that I noticed as a little girl back there, how that she loved to, to be, in the, be in the bosom of her mother. There is something that God put inside of a mother, inside of a baby, that, that bosom, didn't it? And Jesus, you know, he was in the Bosom of the Father. Y'all remember when that storm hit and Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And he went in the bottom of the ship. And when he was in the bottom of the ship, he went to sleep. And while he was asleep, back come the winds and the storm and it beat against that ship. And everybody panicking, afraid. Jesus in the bottom of the ship sleeping. How can the world can he sleep when all that rocking, all that wind, and all that lightning, and all that tremendous rain? How can he be sleeping? Well, he was in the bosom of the Father. His spirit had entered. Into the very bosom of the Father. And he was like a man in a trance. <laughs> Suspended. He, you know, he said, let's go to the other side. Thank God. That's what, it, that's, that's what God wants us to do. To be like Jesus. To get into the bosom of the Father. Where the devil can't touch us. Where the devil can't reach us. Is that all of that scripture? Read it again. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wing. Hide me under the shadow. See, that's the hiding place. Under the shadows of your wing. Uh-huh. From the wicked that oppress me. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies. From my deadly enemies. Who can pass me about. Who can pass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. Yes. With their mouth they speak proudly. Uh-huh. 
they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowed down to the earth. Hide me from this evil, this demon spirit, this wicked people that are controlled by the devil. Read another one here in Psalms chapter 31 and verse 20. 31 and verse 20. Well, he's getting that one. Uh, so she read you get Psalms, I believe it's 64 and verse uh, 21. Brother Chuck, you can get Psalms 143 and verse 9. Huh? Oh, Brother Chuck got the microphone. Okay, go ahead and, and read that one. Which one did it take you, Brother Chuck? Psalms 143 and verse 9. Deliver me, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. From my enemies. From my enemies. I flee unto thee. I flee unto thee. To hide me. To hide me. Yes. See, that is the key. Lord, I run to you to hide me. Psalm 60, what did I say? 64 and 21, I think. Huh? 31 and 20, yes. Thou shalt hide them. Thou shalt hide them. In the secret of thy presence. In the secret of thy presence. From the pride of man. From the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly. Thou shalt keep them secretly. In a pavilion from the strife of tongues. In a pavilion from the strife of the tongue. Boy, that's so bad. Isaiah. 32 and verse 2. You get that one. In. And uh, Brother Ephraim, you get Psalms 61 and verse 3. Brother Chuck, uh, Isaiah 62 and verse, Isaiah 32 and verse 2. And the man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. The man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Winds, yes. turmoils, yes. troubles, things that tosses you about, Satan's winds of adversity that tries to rock our boat. Go ahead. And the man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Yes. And a covert from the tempest. And a covert from the tempest. Tempest means tornadoes. Hallelujah. Well, that's, God tried to tell us some of these scriptures here. Which was the next one? Psalms 61 and 3. Is that right? Read that one. For thou hast been a shelter for me. For thou hast been a shelter for me. And the strong tower from the enemy. And the strong tower from the enemy. That's good. Psalm 68 and verse 20. Psalm 68 and verse 20. He that is our God. He that is our God. Is the God of is, salvation. Is the God of salvation. And unto God the Lord. Uh huh. Be the issues of life from death. Yes. Amen. Is that 68? 68 and 20. And 20? Yes, sir. Well, that's good too. Now let's go to Proverbs 4 and verse 20 through verse 22. My son, my son, attend to my words. Yes. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Uh huh. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them. Yes. And health unto all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth. Is that the 22? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Yes. Another one here in uh, Psalms chapter 91 and verse 10 through 12. Psalms 91. There shall no evil before thee. Now, before we read this, I want to say that, you know, um, 
there's a place that God wants to hide us in because of the uh, pessimists mm -hmm. and the uh, contagiousness of all of these things that's fixing to hit just like COVID and just like uh, COVID or coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, they say that it killed, what, 7 million people. And I heard just this year, you know, they said that, you know, we're going past it. But I heard this year that there have been a confirmed number of cases of 768 million. Two hundred and thirty seven thousand. <laughs> no, we're supposed to eight hundred million in the in the world. Mm. This thing is not going yet. That's right. This is why David is saying over there in Psalms, read that Psalms ninety eight and verse ten. Psalms 91 and verse 10. There shall no evil before me. God said these COVID-19, this corona, these pestilence, these highly contagious diseases that's coming on the earth. That's what he's talking about. That there shall no evil uh -huh. before thee. Before thee. Neither shall any plague Neither shall any plague or pestilence come near thy dwelling. For I don't care how contagious it is. God said, I won't let it come near your dwelling. There's a place in God where the devil can't find us. There's a place in God where sickness can't trade, where diseases cannot trade, where these pestilence and all of these things, these mad scientists, Experimenting in, they're going to break loose, but there's a place in God where they cannot touch you. According to the Bible, here. finish reading that through verse 20. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. He give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee. To keep thee. In all thy ways. In all of your ways. They shall bear thee up. They shall bear you up. In their hands. Yes. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. How many of you? I like that. Yes. And over here in Psalms 30, I think I made it. No, I haven't. Psalms chapter 31 and verse 20. 31 and verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. From the pride of man. From the pride of man, the secret of thy presence. There's a place by me. Well, no foul, no vulture, no evil, no disease. There's a place by me where the devil have never ventured. But all of this that's coming on the world cannot enter. Hide the place. Oh, I want to be in that place. Hide me in that pavilion. Hide me in that place under the shadows of your wings. Hide me in that presence that these scriptures here are talking about. In the secret, is that what it says? Yes. Psalms 31 and verse 20 again. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. From the pride of man. From the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly. Thou shalt keep them secretly. In a pavilion. In a. See, keep them. What? Secretly. In a pavilion. Secretly. Yeah. Keep them. Well, death. Sickness. Demon spiritual. That's ruling the world. Keep them secretly. Yes. Well, none of these things. There's a, there's a place God wants to keep us. There's a place 
Well, God wants to preserve us and keep back because it's fixing to, like a damn burst. All these things fixing to hit. What happened back in 2020 with that pandemic, that was just a wake up call. And God allowed that to happen just to see if people was going to turn to Him. But now they've relaxed and gone back. And even the churches have gone back into frontality. But now, God is fixing to unleash things. Evil men and seducers shall now wax worse and worse. And we're going to see things get worse in this generation. Sure, that's going to be a move, a revival, like we've all have been taught, you know, like the visions have spoken, but we need to get in a place where we can be kept from the darkness and from the storms and from all of this that's fixing to hit this world. That's why I'm reading these scriptures to you because I know we need to be trying to hide ourselves. In Him, John chapter 14 and verse when well, you start at verse 1, John chapter 14, and go ahead and start at John chapter 15, excuse me, and start at verse 1. I am the true vine. Uh huh. And my father is the husband. I'm the true vine. My father is the husband. Every branch in me. Every branch in me. That beareth not fruit. Yes. He taketh away. Uh huh. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Yes. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean. Through the words which I have spoken unto you, uh -huh. abide in me, abide in me, and so I in you. That's that place. Abide in me, and I in you. Yes. Go ahead. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye. No more can you. Except you abide in me. Except you abide in me. Uh-huh. I am the vine. I'm the vine. Ye are the branches. You are the branches. He that abideth in me. He that abides in me. And I in him. And I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. Lord, help me to uh, get into that place where I can abide in the vine. That's where the sap is coming from. That's where the life of Jesus Christ is flowing from that from that vine. I well in one place he told us, except you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no life in you. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, what is in me and I in him? For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And when you Eat my flesh, drink my blood, my life is going to be dwelling inside of you. And when my life is dwelling inside of you, death will not be able to enter. Sickness and plagues will not be able to enter. Greater is He, the life of Christ that comes in you through the Holy Ghost, that comes in you through abiding the vine, abiding the, uh, uh, in the vine that sap. Is now flowing out of you. That that was in Christ that kept him from sickness. He was in the Father. And that, that kept him from sickness and from diseases and from death and from plagues is now where I am that you may be also. Ain't that something? No wonder when he immediately, after he got to preaching, that the ministry was launched. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach, to heal, to deliver, to bring life, to bring deliverance. And the people got mad because he said, this day is the scripture fulfilled. They got upset with him. And they wanted to pick him up and throw him down, head with, over a, a, a steep hill, but he passed through them. Didn't he? 
God miraculously caused him to pass through the crowd. I remember reading how that uh, back in the 50s, during the Korean War, there was uh, a man that escaped the communists in North Korea. What? What's wrong with that man that ran over there in North Korea this week? Ran across that border. Only you know that they had, had just, just last year, I think, brought a man back that they tortured him to death. He was nothing but a zombie. And I think he died a few days later. Being under their torture. And here this man went and ran over there South Korea, North Korea. And don't tell him what kind of abuse he's getting. Running. But back in the 50s, there was a preacher. Uh, Dallas Clement, I believe that was his name. And I read about him years ago. How that he escaped communist North Korea. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if that was the particular country or not. But they've sent soldiers, communist soldiers looking for him. But God blinded them. And he ran until he couldn't ran until he couldn't go in the father. And he collapsed at the river. And the river was too wide for him to swim. And he couldn't get across. He collapsed. And then he woke up. And he was on the other side of the river. And they was wondering how he got over there. God miraculously picked him up and carried him to the other side. Somewhere. He entered into that pavilion. He entered into that bosom. He entered into that secret place. Somewhere God miraculously kept him. So we were about to be kept supernaturally. I was preaching. I know it may have been a strange kind of a mess. I didn't preach long, about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, Sister Annie's uh, uh, celebration. And I was preaching, and I was telling the people about how God said that, and I may have mentioned a little bit of it here, how that God said that there was a hidden army that he was supernaturally going to raise up in these last days. And I give them a few examples, let them know how that, um, over in the Old Testament, how that God had allowed angels to throw hailstones down from heaven and kill a bunch of folks. Y'all remember reading about that? And kill a bunch of folks. And how that uh, on another occasion, how that Elijah, I mean Elisha was with Gehazi and they were surrounded by a Syrian army. Tens of thousands of soldiers all around them coming to get Elisha, because Elisha, every time Syria planned a surprise attack on Israel, that was a man that seen a vision of it, his name was Elisha, and he would always tell um, the uh, military and the captain where the attack was at and how he could avoid it, and they said, somebody is Tell it. We got a spy among us. Somebody's tell it. And someone said, we don't have no spy, but there's a prophet over there in Israel seeing visions telling those Israelites how they can, how, how we have been uh, hiding and everywhere we hide, every plan we make, somebody, he's, he's warning them. And he, they sent a whole army to go and get Elisha and Gehazi. And man, they were surrounded by thousands. And Gehazi woke up and said, Elisha, look, we're surrounded. How are we going to get through this? How are we going to get out of this? And Elisha said, God opened his eyes up and let him see. And God opened up his spiritual eyes and he saw angels that were surrounding all the enemies. 
And he saw uh, the, the host of angels all around him and Elisha. Well, God said his angels would be encamped about them that what? Fear him. See, God got a secret the devil don't know about. These angels that was encamped around Elisha and Gehazi. And also, the, um, what I was telling you about these stones, hell stones, being cast down out of heaven. Secret army that God had. And I gave them other examples. How did God have got a people? How did God have got not just a people, but he's got angels that are going to fight with us. And not only angels, but we're going to be encamped about with a great cloud of witnesses. And these witnesses camped camp about don't mean just getting in a, 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 a getting in one of these great big old arenas or, or getting in a football stadium and being cheered on to go on. But this great cloud of witnesses are going to be the spirits of just men that have been made perfect. Those that have died in the Lord and have gone on ahead of us, they are the spirits of men that have been made perfect. The spirits of just men that are going ahead of us. And a lot of them are going to one day, when they're going to come back and they're going to be with us, we may not see them, but they're going to be right there, just like Moses and Elijah. You know, somebody told my Brother Blue, I was at the day of knowing nothing. Well, they don't know the whole scriptures, do they? Moses and Elijah, they came back and they ministered unto Jesus. One of the men in the Bible came back in the book of Revelation and he came to, he came to John and John would want to bow down to him. He said, don't bow down to me. I'm one of the, I'm one of the fellow servants. I'm one of the prophets. He said, I'm just here to help you out. Well, we're going to have these spirits of just men made perfect, going to be standing right next to us that's going to encourage us just like they did Jesus, just like they did John on the Isle of Patmos. The spirits of God is, I am the Lord and I change not. If he done it for them, he's going to, see, there's a secret on it. That God is preparing to get it in, fight with us. That's why the scripture says one is going to chase a thousand, two is going to chase ten thousand. Well, we're going to have some help. Help is on the way. You might as well get ready for it. And, uh, and, and uh, so many other scriptures lets us know that we're not going to be alone. But we're going to have, you know, the Bible says heaven and earth is going to join together one day. You ever read that in the book of Ephesians? How that heaven and earth is going to join together. I, mean, I believe it's over there in Ephesians chapter 1. I may have read it to you last week. And when past chapter 1, uh, I may, maybe verse 12, I'm not exactly sure, but it talks about Y'all see it? Visions. That dispensation of the fullness of time? Yeah, yeah, I was reading that to you. That in the dispensation, in the, in the season, where everything comes to fulfillment. In the season, where everything that every prophet has ever prophesied will be fulfilled. Amen. Not one dotting of the eye, not one crossing of the T of what's written is going to fall. Jeremiah 1 and 12, I will watch over my words to bring them to pass. Isaiah 55, it speaks how that the word that have gone out of my mouth, it shall accomplish what I said it to accomplish. Not one word of God is void of power. You don't believe this? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What verse was that? 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of time that in the dispensation of the fullness of time when, might, when God gets ready to fulfill you know uh, one of the prophets said who is it that's going around with this proverb saying that God's word failed that everything he prophesied is, is not coming to pass y'all remember reading about that prophet he said I'm going to call this proverb to cease. I'm going to call these lies to cease. He said, I, in your day, O oh rebellious generation, I'm going to fulfill all of my word. I'm going to bring to pass every vision. I'm going to bring to pass everything that I've spoken through every man or woman of God. And in your day, you're going to see it. Yes. Remember it? Thank you, Jesus. Finish reading that. That he might gather together. In, that he might gather together. In one, all things in Christ. In one, all things in Christ. Both which are in heaven. That means everything that's in heaven. And which are on the earth. And which are on the earth. Even in him. Even in him. They go all come together. <laughs> Who are they, Brother Blue? Well, I don't know all of them. I know there are some silvers and some caravans, car the, the silvers and the caravans, huh? And the um, so many things that secrets of God that we that have not been opened is now fixing to be opened to us. Now fixing to be revealed to us. We're not going to get out here and fight this battle by ourselves. We're going to find a host of heaven is going to join with us and fight the devil and his crowd. And all these principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness are going to be cast down and under our feet. Satan shall be bruised shortly upon your feet. Yes, we're going to see one of the greatest moves of God that the world has never witnessed. Like I say, eyes have seen, ears have heard, have been in the heart of man. The help that we are fixing to get from heaven, the help that we are fixing to, this supernatural army, this army that's been hidden, that the hid from the devil, God is fixing to bring him on the scene. Don't thank you in this by yourself. I mean, the scripture's back. Just read heard that scripture. Read that scripture again. In the dispensation of the fullness of time. Read that scripture again. That in, the, in the dispensation of the fullness of times. We're in that dispensation. Where everything is going to be fulfilled. All of the, the restitution of all things is now to come on the scene. Thank God. We're in that dispensation. God has been giving us a little bit at a time. Giving us showers, giving us refreshments, giving us revivals, giving us uh, different seasons, moving at different times, different levels, and different things together. And now we're in a time where the core, the fulfillment of all things, we have gone through this dispensation, that dispensation, dispensation of a healing revival, a holiness revival, the gifts. Oh, the, the gifts of God revival. A dispensation have been coming in levels and in different layers, but now the dispensation of the fullness. Hallelujah. The fullness of God is now going to be displayed, demonstrated. The world has been waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now the fullness, the full dispensation, nothing is going to be held back. Everything is going to be unfair. Jesus will see the spirit without measure. Jesus will see the spirit without measure. And now, we're fit to receive that same spirit without measure. Nothing is going to be held back from us. Get ready. Finish that he might gather together. That he might gather together in one all things. In one all things. In 
Christ. In Christ. Both which are in heaven. See, that there. Yeah. Both which are in heaven. And which are on earth. And which are on earth. Even in him. Even in him. And man, he's talking about the devil fixing to be completely bound and completely cast into the bottomless pit. God got an army that he's getting ready to bring about. Psalms. Let's read this one here. Psalms. You don't mind if I read one or two more, do you? Psalms 103 and verse 3. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who forgives all your iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? I remember I was talking about this morning about the Siamese twins. Amen. Twin, and they have twin evils, sin and sickness. But God said, I'm going to destroy this old Siamese twin. I'm going to destroy sin and sickness. That's what he's saying right here. Psalms 103, and verse 3, read that again. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who forgives all your iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who forgiveth all your iniquities? Who healeth? It? You know, and you got all kinds of specialists, doctors that can do this and do that. But we're talking about a God that's going to heal all of our diseases. He went about doing good, healing all that was sick, and all that was oppressed of the devil. As many as touched him was made whole. There's not going to be one sick. There's not going to be one that's bound. There's not going to be one that's oppressed. I'm talking about a, a, a full redemption is coming to the body of Christ. God going to get rid of these Siamese twins. He's going to lay the axe to the root of these Siamese twins. This tw what you talking about? Sin and sickness. Sin and sickness. The devil has brought a, a, a twin evil. And he's going to get rid of this thing that has brought a double curse. With me. What, that's what he told us in Galatians 3 and 13. Christ has redeemed us from this twin evil. Christ, Christ has redeemed us. He himself took our sins and bore our sicknesses in his own body so that he could curse the devil. Get ready. Hallelujah. I don't know what we're reading today. Read that one more time. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who forgives all of your iniquities? All of them. Who healeth all thy diseases? Who healeth half of your diseases? No, all of them. See, this revival is going to bring the healing. We've had all kinds of dispensation that have brought different kinds of revival, but yet there were some conditions that was not cured, that was not healed, that did not get full. Uh, Deliverance, but this last dispensation is going to bring about the fullness of the, of the whole body being completely. He's coming back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, without sickness, without demon spirits, without all of these things. Go ahead. Is that all I meant? Huh? Who redeemed that life? From who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness? Yes. And tender mercy. And tender mercy. Who satisfies thy mouth with goodness? Satisfy your mouth. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood, so you can have my life inside them. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh yes, that's what I'm waiting for right now. So that thy youth is renewed as an eagle. Let's read Psalms. 101, some, excuse me, some 121, verse 3 and verse 4. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will not suffer your foot to be removed. He that keepeth thee, he that keepeth thee, will not slumber. Man, can you imagine all these hundreds, thousands, beyond, eons of years God has never slept? He never slumbered. He never took a cat nap. He never closed his eyes one moment. He that keep it in Israel. Man, can you ever while we sleep in God's and I'm watching? Huh? While you're resting, I'm watching. I'm observing. 
I'm saying everything. I don't slumber. I don't sleep. I'm awake. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm watching. Four o'clock in the morning, I'm watching. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm watching. Six o'clock in the morning, I'm watching. I don't sleep. I don't slumber. I'm not going to let the devil come upon you while you're resting your body, while you're sleeping. I, I keep, and I'm going to preserve, and I'm going to watch over our people. Young men should run and fight and be weary. But they that went on the Lord shall renew their strength. The most high, neither faint, not as he weary, but he gives strength to them that faith. And them that wait upon him, he giveth power to stand up. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Ain't you glad you got somebody that don't take a nap? Amen. Ain't you glad you got somebody that don't go to sleep? You're going to go home at night after you pray, you go to sleep, and while you're sleeping, God said, I'm not going to let the devil slip up on you. Boy, that's not. What a salvation. What a savior. Oh, what a deliverer. Well, I was going to read one more. Over here in a, and this is this is but this is this is very sober in here. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and verse fifty-eight through sixty-one. Let's read that one. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse fifty-eight through sixty-one. Let's read that one. If thou would, will not observe to do all the words of this law, God said, if you don't listen to my words. Uh -huh. That are written in this book. That's written in this book. That thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name. Yes. The Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make the place wonderful. God said, I'm going to make your place. They're going to be amazing. Awesome. That means terrible. Go ahead. And place and the place of thy seed. Uh huh. Even great place. Yes. And the long continuance. Long continuance. And sore sicknesses. Uh huh. And the long continuance. Yes. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases Man. of Egypt. Yes. Which thou wast afraid of. Uh huh. And they shall cleave Look unto that. thee. Cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague. Which is not written in the book of this law. Man, I'm on, I don't know about you, I'm going to find that hiding place. Because yes, I know God's going to do this for the wicked. So my, how do you know it? Because Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43 through 45 tells us that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walks through dry places. You know what dry places is? When there's no revival. When there's no water. Water represents life. When there's no life of God, he walks through dry places. <laughs> I hope we're not in a dry place. Don't ever let your soul get into a dry place. Because that's where the devil hangs out at. In dry places. Where ain't nobody praying. Where those, the gifts of spirit, the gifts of the spirit are not operating. Where the anointing is not being poured out. Where the Holy Ghost is not being poured out. Dry places. Uh-huh. Then will the Lord bring upon thee. See, all these dry places. Finish reading that sister. Who was that? Until thou be destroyed. No, that, that other scripture we were, we were just reading in Matthew chapter 12, 43 through 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. He walked through dry places. Walk through dry places. See that? Walking through dry places. No water. No life. No prayer. No anointing. Forms of godliness. Worldliness. Worldly Christian. Dry places. You ever been in a, you ever been in a dry church? Nobody praying? Nobody seeking God? You ever been around dry Christians? 
praying. You feel like you're the only one praying. Everybody else, you know, dry. Go to dry places. Uh huh. Seeking rest. Seeking rest. Find it tonight. Find because all the places full up. No room in the end for these demons because God took many other devils already there. Go ahead. Then he said, Then he said, I will return into my house. I'm going back to my own house. From whence I came out. Whence I came out. And when he has come, when he comes, he find it empty. Find it empty. Swept. Swept. And garnished. Religious. Forms of garnished. Empty. Swept. And garnished. Go ahead. Then he goeth. Then he goeth. And taken with him seven other spirits. Taken with him seven other demons. Seven other plagues. Seven other worse than COVID-19. Seven other worse. See, all of this is just ahead for America and for the whole world. This is a sober warning from God that if folks somewhere don't get in that secret place, don't let the word of God hide in their hearts and, and, and abide in Christ somewhere all of this is going to come upon people that's not praying. Come upon Christians that just going through the motion and not really stirred, not really awakened, not really sober, not really hungry, not really thirst. God said, blessed are the hunger and the thirst, for they shall be filled. They shall the quench, shall be satisfied. But people that are just going through the motion, this is going to catch them by surprise. Seven times more worse than anything that hit us in 2020. Seven times more worse. That's why God said, get in the hiding place. Get in that place where the devil can't find you. Get in that place. What do you mean, Brother Blue? Well, God sent him a word. He told Moses. He said, you go to every Israelite, go to every house, and tell them to get a lamb. And tell them to get a lamb without spot, without blemish, and take it, and take the blood from that lamb, and put it on the doorpost of the lintel. And when I, when my death had passed by, when death passed by, when disease passed by, when I see the blood, I am going to over, I'm going to pass by that place. And all of the children of Israel obeyed Moses. And they done what God said, and they was hit. They was hid from the death angel. They was hit from all of this stuff that come up on the Egyptians. Every home in every Egyptian, there was death. But in the house of the children of Israel, there was no death. There was no pestilence because they was hidden. They was hidden in Christ. He's told us in Colossians, we did heal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It ain't enough. It's not enough. Well, I'll stand and say something. I'll go ahead. Bible tells us when the enemy comes in, didn't it? And that's what's fixed out. The enemy didn't come in seven times worse than in any generation. That's what God was warning us about in Matthew chapter 12. And verse 43 through 45, when the enemy comes in, he's going to come in seven times worse. And when he does, if we're not in that hiding place, then that's going to be a, a great falling away. Like Paul was warning us about. And all of that's upon us. All of that is upon us. You don't know preachers preach like this, talk like this. That's right. You know, it's more just a, a soothing message. Yeah. Something just to pat people on the back. Or just to excite people's emotions. But I'm giving you the sound doctor. Yeah. Sound word. Yeah. We better get in that hiding place. I'm giving you all 15, 20 scriptures about that hiding place. Yeah. We can't expose ourselves. Give no place to the devil. Yeah. Don't give no place. Why the devil just slip in? Yeah, right. We can shout. We can rejoice. We can jump. 
We're going to be happy, but we better get in a sober place. And, and, and I'm giving you sober scriptures. It's not about getting all emotional excited. It's about getting in a place where the devil can't touch you. Getting in a place where Satan has no power and he just passed right by you. Well, that's what happened. The death angel passed right by all the children of Israel because they was hidden behind the blood. They was hidden where the, where the uh, blood of that lamb was applied and the devil couldn't see it. He couldn't enter. He couldn't enter into that place. Couldn't bring his death. Couldn't bring his disease. Couldn't bring his fear because it was hidden. And, and when they came out of Egypt, they come out, there was not one sick person, there was not one feeble person among the tribe because God had hid them. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. When the enemy come in like a flood, God's going to lift up a standard. When the enemy come in, pause. Come on. Pause. When the enemy comes in, put a comma there. Put a pause there. When the enemy come in, Amen. come on. Like a flood, the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out. Like a flood, God's going to lift up a great wall. Like a flood, yes. God's going to have a shield and a, and, and a protection and a barrier around you. The Holy Ghost is going to be in you like a flood. Pushes back lies, pushes back sickness, pushes back plague, pushes back death, pushes back demon spirit. Like a flood, God's going to stand up in you. Thank you, Jesus. What? Well, we're stopping. This is good. This is sound doctrine. And I got scriptures behind everything. I'm not talking out of back of my imagination. But I'm, uh, from the beginning to the end, that's all you have heard was the word. And I've given you line upon line, precept upon precept, examples in the scriptures showing you that God is going to, God, there is a hiding place. There is a secret place. There is a place in Him where the devil don't know about. There's a place in him where the devil can't touch you. Jesus. Stand on your feet, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wouldn't that be great to get in that place? Yes, Lord. Well, a thousand is falling at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it can't come nigh you because you're hidden. You're hidden. Your life is hid with Christ in God. That's what Colossians said. Your life is hid with Christ in God. How many want to be in that place where when the next pandemic comes, the next pestilence? Like I was telling you, seven, they say over seven million, but it's about over ten million. Die. And how that this year alone, close to a billion people, this year, that um, have got, gotten COVID, might not be like it was, but we're going to have to hide ourselves in that pavilion. Hide ourselves in Christ. Get these scriptures, write them down, memorize them. And, and, and uh, study them. So you, this is what's going to keep you. There's nothing else. He sent his word through this revelation to keep you. Amen. Come on, let's talk to him for a few minutes. Brother Ephraim. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads and say, Lord, thank you for the scriptures, the word, the exhortation, the soberness, Lord. God, help us tonight, Lord. God, we want to be part of that army that you're raising up. We want to be in that place God that you designed for us Lord that no vulture has, has ever seen my God that's even hid from the devil himself Lord. God help us Lord. We want to be my God hidden in you Lord. God when all these things are happening Lord 
God, and all these things are coming to pass, Lord. God, you let us know that there's a place that we can find ourselves in, that we can be protected, that we can be kept, that we can be, Lord, my God, Lord, in, in that secret of your presence, Lord. God, help us, Lord. God, to let this word break up our final grounds. God, we know that all these promises and all these riches and all these, my God, things in you, Lord, are for us to be partakers of them. God, help me, Lord. I want to be a partaker. I want to be found hidden in you, Lord. God, lead us, Lord, into this place, mighty God. God, you said flesh, my God, and blood will not inherit this. But God, you said it's going to be the spiritual man. It's going to be them that have ears to hear, Lord, and eyes to see. God, in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. God, Lord, we thank you, Lord. God, even though this has been a sobering work, but it's been such an encouragement, God, to know, Lord, that God that neither sleeps or slumber watches over us. God, and you can put us in that place where we cannot, where the wicked one will touch us not. God, in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord. God, to do my part. Help me, Lord. My God, to let you lead us, Lord, into that place. Guide us into that place. Guide us with your eye, Lord. God, instruct us, Lord. God, and let your word lead us, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, help us, Lord. God, help us, mighty God. Lord, we don't know what's out there in the horizon, Lord. But we do know what your word says tonight, Lord. There is a place, mighty God, where we can be hidden in Christ. Where we can be hidden in you, Lord. God, us and you and you and God. God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me, mighty God. To search my own heart out, Lord. Help me, Lord, to break up my fallow grounds. Help me, mighty God. Jesus, to continually, Lord. God, you said it's not just about hooping and hollering, Lord. It's not just about being happy and God and being, Lord, excited, Lord, in our emotions. But, Lord, it's going to take something more, Lord, to keep us from these plagues and these pestilence and these diseases and these things that's coming upon the face of the earth, Lord. God, we can be kept. Lord, we don't have to be overtaken by all this curse that's running rampant on the earth. But God, you said that we can be kept in your pavilion. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for being a God that's so big. We thank you for being a God that's so strong. We thank you for being a God that's all powerful. You're able to keep your people. You're able to keep, my God, any harm from coming. My God, Lord, you said the numbers of our hair are counted, God. Lord, we thank you for being such a powerful God, for being such an omnipotent God, an omniscient God. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you tonight. God, we thank you for unveiling these mysteries. God, in these revelations, God. That you're opening up to our understanding, God, and you, you continue, Lord, to break these seals, Lord, and give us that comprehension. God, we thank you tonight. Go ahead and clap your hands, Lord. We thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord. We 